everybody, thanks for joining me. In this video, what we are taking a look at is calculating parallel runs for a generic 75 degree termination, 600 volts, three phase, non-continuous load. Um, we're not looking at the limitations for parallel runs, but we are taking a look at doing the actual calculation and using the 2018 version of the Canadian Electrical Code to size the conductors required to feed a 440 amp load. We're not taking into account any voltage drops or anything like that. We're just doing the straight calculation to determine the size of conductor. So before we get going, we will mention briefly the things that we need to keep in mind when we are doing parallel runs. Obviously, we need to make sure that these are free of splices throughout total length, have the same number of circular mills, same type of insulation, terminated in the same manner, same conductor, and specifically the same length to ensure that the resistances of each cable are pretty close to equal or as close as we can get so that we don't have overcurrent on any one particular conductor due to a higher resistance. So as noted in the example, we're looking at a 440 amp load and we're going to split this into three separate conduit runs. Now, let's say this was a three phase load. We had our red, black, blue from our supply. You would need a red, black, blue in each one of these conduits in order for those magnetic fields to cancel each other out and then you wouldn't get that overheating in those conduits as well. So to do this calculation, we're going to take our 440 amps and just simply divide it by 3. Once we do that, we end up with a number of 146.67 amps. This is the minimum ampacity of each one of those individual conductors. So if we look around, we have our 75 degree termination temperatures. And let's say just for example, we have 75 degree termination temperatures in our panel as well. We know that with that lowest termination temperature of 75 degrees, we are going to take this over to table two. Again, we're dealing in this case with copper conductors as a default. As well, no more than three conductors per conduit, so we don't have to worry about those extra correction factors in there either. So at table two, we know with that 75 degree column based on that lowest termination temperature of 75 degrees, each one of those conductors should be a number one aught with an ampacity of 150 amps. So that we know inside this conduit there should be three number one aught conductors and each one of those conduits will contain three of those number one aught of conductors to supply that 440 amp load. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and calculate the overcurrent device required, again, we are concerned with protecting the conductors that we've run, not the load itself. So to size the overcurrent device, we're gonna take now the ampacity of our conductor and multiply it by the number of parallel runs that we have. So in this case is three. 150 amps times three gives us a required ampacity for our overcurrent device of 450 amps. And if we take that to table 13, we find out that we should be sizing it to a 450 amp overcurrent device. Hopefully this has helped you figure out the calculations for parallel runs. Again, all we're doing is taking the ampacity of the load, dividing it by the number of runs, using that as our minimum ampacity when we go to tables one, two, three, four to size our conductors. One last thing to keep in mind, if you do this calculation and it ends up with anything smaller than a one aught gauge conductor, the code tells us that we cannot be smaller than a one aught gauge conductor for parallel runs. So keep that in mind as you're doing your calculations as well. Thanks for watching. 